Near the summit of Mont Donnan in the Vosges mountains, an inscription on a sandstone block boldly claims that in this place, on 5 Floréal Year 9, Victor Hugo was conceived. History doesn't relate whether or not the earth moved for Major Leopold Hugo and his wife Sophie on that sunny day in May 1801, but what we do know is that their act would cause seismic reverberations throughout the French establishment over the years to come. Victor Hugo, the poet, playwright, novelist, statesman, serial womanizer and human rights activist was on his way. was prolific in everything he did. He wrote seven novels, 21 plays, 18 volumes of poetry and some three million words of history, criticism, travel writing and philosophy. He was also an artist. 3,000 of his drawings survive today in a variety of French state collections. Once Hugo arrived in the Channel Islands, he realised that he was going to be able to get a tremendous amount of work done that he hadn't been able to do in the holy belly of Paris. And as he wrote to a friend in a letter, what a shame I wasn't sent into exile earlier. I would have had time to write all these works which I feel will never be finished. The main part of Hugo's work in Guernsey is his novels, Les Miserables, which is really the greatest novel of the 19th century. And then Les Travailleurs de la Mer, Toilers of the Sea, L'Homme qui rit, The Laughing Man, and 93, 93. And the extraordinary thing about all these novels is not only that each novel is very different from the preceding novel, but also that far more than being works of French literature, they, they really are works that are attributable almost entirely to Guernsey. The instability of Hugo's parents' marriage had an enormous effect on his character. He was also greatly influenced by a number of high and low points during the first half of his life. At the tender age of 20, his Ode et Poésie Diverse earned him a royal pension from Louis XVIII. Five years later, his brother Eugène lost his sanity on the day that Hugo married Sophie, the girl they both loved. In 1830, his hugely successful play El Nani opened in Paris. Shortly afterwards, Hugo discovered Adele's affair with the literary critic saint -Berth. A year after that, his novel Notre Dame de Paris, or The Hunchback of Notre Dame as we know it, was published. In 1841, he was elected to the Académie Française. Two years later, his daughter Leopoldine and her husband were both drowned whilst on honeymoon. And then he was caught in flagrante with a certain Madame Billard. French justice was such that he remained above the law and shortly afterwards was made a peer of the realm. She was sent to jail. When Napoleon III seized power in 1851, Hugo openly declared him a traitor and was forced to move to Belgium, where he wrote Napoleon le Petit, a scathing personal attack on the dictator. Well, whatever Karl Marx said about the, the accuracy of Hugo's Napoleon le Petit, you have to say that it, it was extremely effective. And for a long time, there was very heavy censorship imposed by the, the Second Empire. Napoleon Le Petit was really the only famous, coherent account of what had happened in France and how Napoleon III had seized power. After the publication of Napoleon Le Petit, Hugo thought it would be safer to move out of Belgium. 
He moved briefly to Jersey, but was banished for supporting a number of his politically outspoken friends who had written an open and extremely offensive letter to Queen Victoria. Hugo and his son Victor landed in St Peterport at 10 a.m. on the 31st of October 1855 and were greeted by a silent but welcoming crowd, many of whom raised their hats to him. They took two rooms at the Hotel de l'Europe in what is now part of Creasy's department store for a few days, playing billiards and enjoying what Hugo described as a real old Norman port hardly anglicised at all. He later bought this house, number 38 Hauteville, which he renamed Hauteville House, and in so doing acquired immunity from being banished from the island. He lived there for the next 14 years. It was a substantial property. The price was approximately £1,000 sterling, an intriguing little twist there is that the uh, mortgage uh, was in respect of a debt or a lending to one Jean Thomas de Sommery of uh, Sommery Manor in Guernsey and it would appear that he was also one of the members of the court before whom the um, conveyance including the reference to the mortgage was um, uh, consented to. Just the day boy we have. A day without wine is a day without sunshine. <laughs> well, I've got something here that all the people approves the palace. Yeah. There we go. <clears throat> Hugo loved women as much as he loved literature, and his appetite for both knew no bounds. Juliette Trouet his mistress for over 50 years was undoubtedly the love of his life. They went for walks together and corresponded regularly. He wrote 10,000 letters to her throughout their 50 year relationship. Voici toute la nature qui se fait belle. Les oiseaux chantent, la crève chante. Here, all nature is beautiful. The birds sing. The beach sings, and here I am alone, dreaming of you. Juliette, however, knew that, despite his charming words, he had a roving eye, and had learned to tolerate his many affairs. His Gallic charm turned out to be more than the local Guernsey ladies could resist. Hugo and his family continued providing meals for the poor throughout the 1860s and these were emulated throughout many European capitals. After the fall of Napoleon in 1870, Hugo returned to an ecstatic Paris where he was welcomed with open arms. He returned to the solitude of Guernsey to write his final novel, Quatre Vingt Treize, 